It's the second day of June in the year 2019. Welcome to News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. Ahead tonight, Nike at San Germani wins the 2019 Talented Kids. We have these stories and others coming up shortly. First, let's take a look at the major news highlights for the day. In the highlights tonight, about 1 billion CDs is spent on road accidents, recovery and recuperation annually in Ghana. Speaking at a national dialogue on the Minister of the Road Traffic Accident in Ghana, Executive Director of the National Road Safety Commission, Mayor Obriyabwa, said the money could be used on developmental projects if Ghanaians observe road traffic regulations. Also, an ongoing study by Cocoa Board in Cocoa of areas affected by illegal mining shows a total of 8,766 hectares of farmlands were affected in 855 communities in four regions. That study also identified 77601 farms owned by 11,239 farmers as those affected amounting to a loss of 29 million cities in revenue to the state annually. Elsewhere, the Kronkomba and Chokosi chiefs in Accra have expressed their resolve to support government in finding a lasting solution to the conflict in the Chiponi and Saboba districts. The Greater Accra Regional Kronkomba and Chokosi chiefs called for an unconditional end to the conflict. Now, seven-year-old poet Nakiyat Sam Jamani wins season 10 of Talented Kids. The punk baby college pupil from Cape Coast in the central region has never stopped wowing her audience with well-crafted performances filled with wisdom. And elsewhere on the international front, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said Washington is prepared to engage with Iran without preconditions about its nuclear program but needed to see the country behaving like a normal nation, Iran's President Hassan Rouhani suggested on Saturday that Iran may be willing to hold talks if Washington showed its respect, but said Tehran would not be pressured into talks. Mike Pompeo, however, said Washington would continue to work to reverse the malign activity of Iran in the Middle East. Let's now do the big one. In the big one tonight, the Kronkomba and Chokosi chiefs in Accra have expressed their resolve to support government in finding a lasting solution to the conflict in the Chiponi and Saboba districts. The Great Accra Regional Kronkomba and Chokosi chiefs called for an unconditional end to the conflict. The renewed conflict has claimed lives and left thousands of residents, mostly women and children, displaced. This has prompted two ethnic groups in Accra into action. In a joint press statement, the Konkombes and the Chokosis, with support from all the various tribal heads at Old Fadama, have called for an immediate ceasefire. We, the Chokosis and Konkombes, living in Greater Accra catchment area of Ghana, in the strongest terms, totally condemn the clashes. That the conflict in our Estimation was baseless and was between two individuals and not communities and should have been reported as such to the police service in Cherpani. That those two individuals could have spared us the long-standing good relationship and neighborliness existing between the Chokosis and Konkomers, and not in only in the Cherpani and Saboba homelands, but across the entire length and breadth of the country and to have reported the, their misunderstanding on the land issue to the police for settlement. They further called for decisive unbiased action against perpetrators to deter others. Either the suppressing of complaints by the police, refusal to prosecute by the courts, killing peaceful demonstrators, 
or imprisonment of people of a single community while refusing to arrest members of the other community. The Greater Accra Regional Kumba and Chokosi Chiefs called for an unconditional end to the conflict. We should not let what happened yesterday haunt us forever. We must unite today in order to protect our land and people of common enemies. This is the only way we can develop our communities and not through wars and communal killings. Every fighter must lay down their weapons and open the doors to peace. There's absolutely no gain in fighting each other because two individuals have dispute over lands. So let's stay a while longer on this story and speak with Hajia Zuraiwa Tumada from the Anofo side and then Roxane Konde Masun also from the Konkoma side on how worrisome the situation has become for them. Thank you for joining me, lady and gentlemen. So let me start from you, Hajia. How worrisome is this development for you? Thank you very much for this audience. Um, this situation is really very worrisome. Worrisome because it has uh, taken away lots of souls. We've lost so many lives. We've lost so many properties. It's actually brought development to a standstill. Mm. In the sense that, you know, our community is a farming community. Currently, it started raining. We cannot even farm. Mm. Our uh, hospitals, this morning I saw um, Cherry Pony, the Cherry Pony doctor talking and he was telling us that the number of staffs available were about eight. Most it's of them have fled. Yes, are we, because mm. of the conflict. Our teachers are all running away. away because of insecurity. So this conflict has kind of brought everybody to a ransom. Mm. So, so let, me, let me ask you, he, she mentioned a bit about the fact that most of the people in the community are farmers. How is this develop, affecting economic development in the area? How is it affecting that? Okay, let me say good evening to you and a good evening to your viewers. Mm. Definitely one will expect that conflicts such as this will bring a lot of untold hardship in the area. Already the place is a very uh, poor area where we do basically farming and sometimes fishing. So if there's a conflict of this nature, you expect that no activity will go on, mm. which means that there will be more poverty. And this. what is so worrying is that it's a border town. Mm. And if we are not careful, there will be influx of what? This arm activity, Boko Haram activity in the area. And we want to call upon our security services that they should be very mindful of that. Like he said, already nurses, doctors, teachers don't want to go to that area for what teaching, hospital activities, and there's war now. Definitely, if you post a nurse or a doctor to that area, he wouldn't go. And that will bring a lot of hardship in the area. No farming activity is going on now. Currently, as we speak, so it means that food stock cannot be cultivated, uh, fishing cannot be what uh, done, nothing. Is, is moving on. So yeah. definitely this is a, a challenge that we are all facing and we yes. are calling Hadia, for over, over the period, well, there have been a lot of measures to ensure that peace is restored in the area, but it appears these measures haven't really worked. So you are from this place. What do you think we are not doing right? Are we not speaking the people's language? Are we not touching the right spots for these measures to yield results of peace? Okay, thank you very much. I think that, yes, um, you know, conflict resolution is a process. And the process, when you miss at certain stages, then it brings about so many problems. Uh, um, so far, I think that the process was going on. It didn't even reach anywhere, and it started again. It means that we didn't touch on the message very well. Mm. And security have been a very big problem. The number of security that is always sent there is not enough to be able to calm the situation. So I'm using this opportunity to plead on the government. He's doing so well. He sent a good number, and recently he's sent much more. 
I think we need much, we need more to be able to keep the situation. Because if the security are not enough to be at the risk areas at every time, that is when we have these problems coming, coming up, up again. Up. Yes, mm. because um, mostly the numbers they send, because they are inadequate, they are sentenced in the town. Meanwhile, the whole trouble is not in, in the, the town. town. The trouble is always at the banks. Outskirts of yes, the Yes, mm. the, the villages that they think they can use to penetrate. Mm. So if you don't send them at where the problems are always coming from, you have problems. You have because problems. it has to spark before you call security that something is happening has happened here. Back there. Yes, then they rush. And then by the time they get there, the a harm lot has of already harm been caused. Yes, have so been let caused. me come to you. I think that as part of finding solutions to the, the, this issue, we should try and speak the people's language. So in your language, one message you think we haven't said to these people, say to them so they understand the need for peace in, in the whole process. I'll come to you, just so you also do the same thing in your language. Nabative, Kujome, Ndone, K Nangasulu, Babu. Kijak and Bung and Chapon and a Kagget Troba Kagget Trubichaku, Kagget Trubichak Bukokbam Naked Nasulu, Tiak Batabatabak and Naked Panka Kat, Kalatagging Abuku Santa Barna Kijama Ayama Juni Development, and Aunt Moba Chabu Naked Mpusu, Ne Nsidu, Nkatedina, and Kadabomo, but Tia Biju Kijaka Bukutoke Aku Chakoja Duke, our brother and Kakona, and our Adion Kakona, which a Koja Yakuke. O could you away? Chatumakum Pank even the barme. Kijak and Yabukatung Boke. Jacketungana, when Yenake, Tia the bomb, a bayan which take at the Kalka to get be the Yakatungana. Okay. So that Otendan, Gifu, our Nike, took it up and get the journey. Okay, so for the benefit of those who don't understand the language, say it in a, in a line. What I'm that simply said. saying is that yeah. war and conflict will not bring development mm. if there's dispute. We should sit down and allow the due process to follow to and follow. allow the government or the authorities to take charge and know who is because of the land they are fighting and okay. know who, who is the rightful the owner not for peace to, to prevail. Not okay, conflict. Adia, let's hear yours in your language and then you summarize it in English shortly. Okay. Anshika, you know, one bear with a wasuni, a farmer, Bukabi Bama. It is Sakio Sakin Sukuma, it is Barnard Dongo. Maduma Jojo, Mashika, and I are crying your sorry. Jandi, and for Barani Bieso, Nangangam Kerry. Yes, she is no Kerry. Came ma, yet do a sakanzi. Into Kujina Fena, she is a Jandi, and may do a sakanzi. Nema. Sawore sunia kerengu neema ya gomnanti ni ne kuru yo de kembe yo bali ne she ya ka ibani ba yo mayani ya mama ya kara do ma ya sakanzu ashiptin be sunia ne ni ikuru ba ma doctor sim ne bukere mati ya ke ani ne sesim ne teachers yinda ti jande nsu shere ya kere ngangam na anu fom kere ka jande am ya do ya sakanzu Okay, so that's in English, summarize it shortly yes. in English. What I was trying to say is that I'm pleading with every Anufo and every Kukumba to try and exercise restraint to all these things we call conflict because this is never going to bring us any development. Peace is what will bring us development. Insecurity will only drive people away. Okay. Our teachers, our nurses, our workers in general will all Everybody's run away. Yes. Away. So yes. we have to make sure that we, we have peace so that we are able exactly. to live together for development to prevail. Hadia, Suerati, Mada, thank you so much for joining us. And Roxane, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. You are still watching News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV Channel 279. So let's do some other stories now. And an official of the National Health Insurance Scheme has been arrested in Yendi with ammunition bound for Triponi in the Northeast region.
where escalation of ethnic groups has led to curfew. Mohamed Dueshi was arrested by the Bureau of National Investigative Operatives Sunday evening on board a Metro Mass Transit. The boxes of cartridges which were being transported from Tamale to the conflict zone were concealed under a seat in the bus which was being occupied by a police escort. Sources within the bureau told 3news.com. The unarmed police officer who has not been arrested was said to have told the security personnel in the area that the bus was cleaned, hence they should allow them free passage. However, the BNI operatives upon intelligence that contraband goods were being transported to the area insisted on searching the bus registered GL2026. Now, security analyst Emmanuel Coating is joining me on the phone line, so we speak a lot more on this development. Good evening to you, sir. You're live on News at 10 on TV3. Good evening, and thank you for having me. Yeah, so this, this evening we, we were hit with the information that uh, uh, an NHIS official has been arrested for carrying contraband goods. How do you receive this message in the fact that we're trying to resolve peace in this area, and now we hear this. In fact, when I heard the news, I didn't believe it initially, so I had to call Yindi, and the police did me confirm there was such an arrest. And uh, the arrest was made by the BNI. So I think we need to commend the BNI for the good job they have done, even though the police insisted the bus didn't contain any contraband use. They didn't give up. Given that they had intelligence, they were same in the bus. It shows that there's no complacency between the sister agencies when they have information that they want to really search. But there are some significance here. And the significance is that um, the security agencies are not sleeping. They are making sure uh, ammunition don't get to the conflict zone. But the challenge is why the police escorts were trying to influence the PNI to allow the bus to move by saying that they hadn't eaten the whole day and the search revealed otherwise. So the police, as a matter of agency, apprehend equally these two or three police escorts that were in the bus and investigate why those goods were found even under their seats. Mm. We call these kind of people the spoilers of confidence. And this is the time the defense minister has led a multi-party uh, uh, opinion leaders from both areas. And you agree with me that after his visit, tension in the area has reduced. So we're looking at opportunities where we can move in and kickstart the peace process to make sure we don't fall into relapse. So things like this don't help at all. And mm. we need to commend the BNI for the good job. And it also sends one positive signal. It means that the citizens are now willing to cooperate with the security agencies. And this is what we've been talking all along. In modern policing, you have to rely on intelligence from the citizen. And this intelligence came from a civilian in Tamale who entered the Vienna ammunitions were being loaded onto this bus. Without this intelligence, these ammunitions would have been heading into a conflict zone and we would have been pouring water more or less on the rock. Yeah. So I think that the person involved is not a mean a personality. I understand he's the public relations officer of national insurance in Germany, and that makes it worrying because I have been of the opinion that we those from the area that had the opportunity to, exactly. go, to go to school, we have mm. not helped our people. And this has confirmed some of these assertions I've made over the period that we buy ammunition here and send them home for our people to fight among themselves. So they vindicate some of the claims. And I'm using this opportunity to call on the elite from both Saboba and Tripoli. Tripoli. Conflict does not benefit anybody. We shouldn't be finding it. We should look at how 
individually, like you just showed the Chakusi woman and the Kunkumba woman. Exactly. We should, we should be seeing as two people, but working program, together, but of working towards one cause, so that those who even have yeah. power in these areas are able to use the authority to bring the people together. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Koteng, for speaking with us. Emmanuel Koteng is a security analyst. You're also watching News at 10 on TV3. We're also live on DSTV Channel 279. We're back with more after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back and thank you for joining us on News at 10 on TV3. Now, government has made three new appointments at the top management level of the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA. They are Amisha Dai Ousu Amwa as Acting Commissioner for Domestic Tax Revenue Division, Colonel Kwajo Damwa retired as Acting Commissioner, Customs Division, and Julie Esiam, who is to act Commissioner, Support Services Division. They replaced Kwasi Jima Asante at the Domestic Tax Revenue Division, Isaac Krenso as the Customs Division, and Fred Charles Anson at the Support Services Division. All three commissioners have been reassigned to the Finance Ministry. In line with ongoing reforms by government at the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, to improve performance consistent with the 2019 Budget Paragraph 288, there have been changes at the top management level of the institution. Also, about 1,418 employees are being rotated to other areas of the organization. Further changes will be made to retool GRA for the critical task of mobilizing revenue to finance improvement in the lives of Ghanaians. The reorganization has been necessitated by three main factors. press release by the GRA says that man, the movement has been necessitated by three main factors. And let me run you through these three main factors. The first one says GRA has grown significantly over the years with revenues of approximately 38 billion Ghana cities, making it one of the biggest institutions in Ghana, creating the need for much stronger world-class structures. So this is the first reason why the change was made. Second point is number of employees has increased to about 7,000 and another 5,000 through NAPCO, bringing the total employees to 12,000, making it now one of the largest employers outside the civil service. That's the need for the change. The third point is that increasing need for better domestic revenue mobilization in order to realize the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda. Ghana's revenue to GDP of 12.6% is below the West African average of 19.9%. Over the last five years, GRE has failed to achieve revenue targets with accumulated gap of about 3.5 billion Ghana cities. So government believes that these reasons are why the management or the change was done. And so whilst these changes goes on, GRA can best be able to achieve the purpose for which it was established. Yes. And that's it for tonight's edition of News at 10. My name is Grace Hamwa. Sorry, many thanks for joining us. Don't forget, I am black and proud. Thank you.